Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you'll find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers Good afternoon and welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast we are with Mr Kostav Roy for he's the managing director business solutions of Savills India and he brings with us 25 years of experience in the real estate and across varied roles in India, APAC, US and different countries. We would be talking today about the real estate segment particularly the commercial uh, real estate segment and how it's been faring in the backdrop of an imminent slowdown. Welcome to the podcast Mr. Roy. Sir, so my first question obviously is what is the outlook for the commercial real estate leasing space today? While you can say the tech side is obviously is uh, slowing down and that's affecting some of the larger markets in the down south what we are seeing is clearly the the indian companies are on an expansion are in fact they are the ones who are actually growing so the that's that's one trend which we are clearly seeing that the indian companies are backfilling some of the demand that's one the second trend which we are also seeing is that see earlier it has been in the past the requirement for space in terms of square footage but today that is gradually changing into space in terms of number of seats so that's these are the two trends that we are seeing and i think it will it will uh, especially the the demand for seats is very high and uh, i guess it's led by the fact that okay because of the i would say you know the downturn or whatever you may call it people are a little bit more conscious about how they spend the capital expenditure so when it comes to seats they're saying okay fine you know what i have a flex space operator or a co-working player who can do it for me can run it for me so it works out great for me i don't mind being giving a one year lock in or maybe even a two year lock in for that space this is where i think these two trends are emerging one is the indian companies definitely are seem to be on a growth phase maybe backed by the fact that the indian economy is actually doing well and the second is that the shift from square footage to seats uh, does this uh, since this shift is happening between square foot to seats is this mm-hmm. impacting the rentals in any way and if so what is the impact see rentals as such really haven't moved around on a pan india basis not moved around not too much yes there will be pockets of uh, you know places one is where there's more supply and of course the other side is where where you would have actually pretty tight supply you know so places where there's pretty tight supply clearly we are seeing some rentals moving up i mean classic case say today i'm, I'm sitting in, in mumbai in in bkc okay there's hardly any good quality space so obviously the rentals have formed i would say i wouldn't say that they have gone up you know dramatically or anything but they have kind of held steady so overall so far the rentals have generally remained steady i would say so even at place like say dlf uh, savan city uh, you know the kurgaon area i think it has done really well uh, when it comes to flex spaces i think again there is a shortage of actually good quality flex you know seats in good quality buildings with good, good quality operators so there are many boxes to be ticked when you tick those boxes the number of seats which are available in the market is very very limited considering a large player like cognizant recently announced that it's going to what do i say give up 80000 odd seats which roughly works out to be 11 million square feet how does this impact the industry is is it a one off instance or do you see this becoming a trend see some of this actually started off from the uh, second half of last year you see there are a lot of company and especially i'm talking about say uh, companies which are based in say a place like say bangalore or in hyderabad where they said that uh, okay they had option spaces spaces to grow typically when you're doing a deal you have option spaces saying that okay fine i'm going to take up so much of square footage in a certain period of time so what we started seeing was where company said listen we do not need those option spaces as such so that was actually the start saying that okay fine which means that the growth that i was forecasting or i was expecting to have i'm not having that now that was one piece of the of the entire uh, jigsaw puzzle and then came to the thing that okay fine amongst what i have am i seeing people coming back to office or no okay if i'm not seeing people enough coming back to office then what do i do so i guess these are some of the things which i think a lot of companies are grappling with especially on the tech side i would say that's to and i've been talking to uh, we've been talking to clients and try and understand okay how are people coming back so i would say leave aside say mumbai and delhi i would say where most of the people are pretty much back into office uh, on the tech side it's really not that high so you typically have a maybe a monday to thursday is a reasonably good occupancy but then after that it starts tapering off so and these are the kind of things which i think companies are grappling with saying okay fine what's going to be the new new way of working what's the new space of working and also 
keep in mind that you have the Gen Z, which is just entering the workforce. I mean, they've just entered the workforce in about two years back. And, uh, you know, the concept of work from anywhere is just... Uh, so I think all companies are going to try and see how to optimize their operations, keeping their business side as well as the cost side, how, how to balance that out. And I think there's no clear-cut answer, Vishek. I mean, everybody is trying to see what works. Considering that India has still not been hit by the slowdown, as we, as we say so, and as you're also pointing out, but do we need to worry now at some point? Do you see there's that impact in commercial real estate? Large deals are really not happening. Uh, large, yeah. If you look at re some relocations may, but the fact is that if you're looking at fresh large deals saying, okay, fine, I want huge amount of new space, that's clearly not happening. Yes, they might still be happening in packets of 25, 30,000 or maximum 50,000 square. That is uh, pretty much not there in the, in the pipeline, at least until... I guess that will go on for the next, I think, one and a half, two years until people figure out that, okay, how many people are going to be in office on a permanent, regular basis? Or in terms of what is the occupancy? What is the stabilized occupancy which is going to be there in office? Is it 75, 80% or is it going to be 20 to 30%? And there's a huge variation then, you know, and which days work and all that kind of thing. And if you see the way things are emerging, I think uh, some of the tier two cities may actually see some growth happening where I think there seems to be a push that saying, okay, can we get some uh, seats in some of the other tier two cities as well? So we are handling some, some of that kind of queries and uh, it's just that the flex space operators have still not gone too much into the tier two or the tier three cities as yet actually was my next question flex space yeah. seems to be a some sort of a success story in this it was written off at one point it came back during covid it's come back yeah. again now when it's a slowdown yeah. here but tier yeah. two isn't exactly their forte they did try what is the outlook yes. there Today. See, are they going uh, to be the success story this time again? Yeah, see, uh, if you look at, uh, I mean, FlexSpace has done a wonderful pivot. Clearly, when they started off 2020, things were not looking good, but I think it's worked out very well. Yes, there is consolidation. I like normal office developers also. Over here also, there is, I mean, today, if you have, say, Pan India network of FlexSpace operators, you have about 9, 10 of them, or maybe maximum 12 of them. Unlike uh, earlier, there were lots now the question is that, and I think uh, where a lot of the flex space operators we've been talking to, they don't mind going into the tier two cities, or, uh, you know, or the tier three cities, provided they have some form of firm commitment from the occupiers saying, okay, fine, you know what, if you're going to take up 100, 150 seats, I don't mind going over there and taking up a larger space where at least 50% of my risk is covered by you at least for two years, because they are also governed by cash flows and a whole bunch of stuff and operations also, because even running an operation in a tier two city, you might make sure you have the right vendors in place and give the same experience uh, that you're able to give in the tier one city. So those are the kind, I'm sure the thing that they, all of them are actually debating. And if, if they get a large commitment, a firm commitment from a certain occupier, they will most definitely go there. Which brings me to my next question and a completely different segment, but it's related to office space once again, it's the REITs. REITs had somewhat of a success story, at least the three REITs in India. Now, considering again that large deals have slowed down, it's a more smaller deal. What is the outlook there? If I were to look at the total uh, office space, uh, general stock is about 700 million square feet. 350 million square feet is what is sitting at about eight or nine landlords. And out of that, 100 is sitting with the office REITs. The thing is that some of this, uh, the balance 250 will also flow back into the REITs because of some of them as under construction or some of them, they're just waiting for them to mature to plow back into that. See, going forward, I would say that REITs is a wonderful routing for normal retail investor to participate in the office space. Now, if you look at the all the three REITs, their portfolio is fairly well spread out. Yes, there might be in some pockets of their portfolio where there's slightly higher vacancy, but it is balanced by, you know, some other parts of within that portfolio, which kind of makes up with either which, you know, low vacancy uh, location or being able to get a higher rental. So, Overall, the portfolio looks, all the three portfolios look fairly, fairly stable and balanced, I would say. Any you know? new REITs coming up? Do you see that happening this yeah, year? We, 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 see the, we see the retail Nexus uh, Trust REIT, which has opened up the IPO uh, today. I, I can't comment on the pricing because I really don't know that side of the business. But the fact is that, I mean, given that they have a fairly nice portfolio uh, in terms of spread across, I think, several cities and uh, I think about 9 or 10 million square feet. I think that's a... Something which, uh, you know, people really want to participate on the retail side, I think it's, it's worth considering. 
rentals in REITs or dividend outflow in REITs is still relatively lower compared to the global standards of Singapore, US, Hong Kong, to be very specific, if I may put in. Where do we stand today? We are still at the bottom of the ladder. See, today your uh, dividend yield, which we are getting in most of the REITs, is around between 5 or 6%. Capital appreciation, depending. I mean, uh, the last one year has really not been... Uh, Kind of okay, but overall, you one expects a capital appreciation of between four to five percent. I think that's the kind of thing. So I would say a REIT is somewhere you know playing a return game, which is somewhere you know not uh, slightly obviously less than the peer equity play, but it's a lot safer. I would say. See, if you look at uh, some of the, I think it's better than the debt mutual funds. Uh, of course, that there's a huge tax issue on that, but it's uh, it's yes, it's not as aggressive as the as the equity mutual fund, but I think it's better than the debt mutual funds. You know, so. So you look at it from that perspective and anyway, it's uh, I think it's uh, not taxable at the hands of the investor. So I think that's a big benefit. I mean, the REIT has given an opportunity for the individual investor to actually participate in real estate. Otherwise, real estate is frankly such a high uh, entry barrier that, uh, you know, even if you want to do something, the risks are too high, the cost is too high. I think REITs is a wonderful entry and and uh, I think really strongly encourage uh, people to actually look at uh, REITs. You know, if they want to be in real estate, if they want to balance their portfolio, say you have equity, you have gold, you have you have futures and, you know, real estate definitely uh, should be part of that. Final question. It's a very short, let's say short view question or a small time view question is what are the immediate trends you see in the commercial real estate market, particularly office leasing and retail, let's say one month period, two month period. Uh, the, the demand is actually emerging from the Indian companies. So that that remains strong, especially also from the Indian banking uh, companies. I think they're, they're doing very, very well. Institutional landlords are going to try and retain their, uh, their head rent, or their face rent. And I think that's where you, you have to see as to kind of negotiate kind of uh, what kind of incentives which can be played out, keeping the head rent uh, the way it is. I think that's where I, I believe landlords will be a little bit more flexible. Uh, from that point of view. Uh, interestingly, there's a strong demand for purchase as well, but there's not too many quality spaces which are available for purchase in the office side. Retail, retail, I believe, I think if I were to look at the way the retail sector has actually grown for us in, in India, I think it's, especially in the last five to six months, I think it's done very well. And we, plus we've got some new uh, new entrants uh, in, in the retail. I think retail will, uh, will do well, whether it's high street or whether at least the established malls, I think they will all do well. High streets also will do very well. So I think that's, I think retail is a lot more positive as compared to the commercial, which is a little bit more, I would say, subdued. Any price range for the rentals that you're looking at and any changes there? The pricing is so, is so vast. I mean, today you've got, you know, Bombay I'm sitting at some places anywhere between 300 to 450, 500, going down to even 60. Or even if you see some of the prime spaces in Bangalore at around 200, place like Gurgaon, you're looking at 125, 130. Also, you've got tech spaces which are going at, uh, you know, around 80 rupees or so. So you've got a wide range. And uh, I think a lot of corporates actually need to figure out as to what works for them, you know, aware of, and it's totally related to what the kind of operations that they're doing. There's something which is front office. Yes, you take some of the front office space at a higher cost, but the balance, you don't need to be sitting over there. You can just move it out. So that's that's the way I look at it. Sure, yeah. sir. That was my final question. And once again, thank you for being on the podcast and joining us. Sure. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank Thanks, you. Abhishek.